Hola, witches, magical minds, and our mundane allies. It is October 23rd, 2018. These are the cards of our day, cards of inspiration. And we're working with getting into the vortex. Getting into the vortex. Uh, it'll be fun. It's Tarot Tuesday, so we're going to have fun. We're going to enjoy ourselves. Uh, we're going to do whatever we do. And again, because it is Tarot Tuesday, it's going to take me a second to focus. But I'm going to go over here, look over here, and share this wherever I can. Uh, but yeah, we'll enjoy ourselves. Hey, Helen. Hey, Kate. Uh, so namaste, Robin. Uh, I'm going to share this in a group called All Things Witchcraft. Because it is Tarot Tuesday in that group. So check it out. Hopefully everyone's having a blessed day so far. It's been, it's been interesting, not bad, just interesting. So now that I've shared it, let's go back here. Hey, Helen, Kate, hey, Julie, Victoria, hey, Lisa, good to see you. And again, there's like, honestly, I'll be doing a review on this. One of the Things it's really it's just you know searching one of the things about the like, hay house uh, decks at times it's really challenging to open the box like that's probably one of the most challenging things out of that is opening the box it, like sticks together and it's like hard to anyways that's you know very minimal something small it's not something like you can really work and uh worry about so yeah hopefully everyone's having a good tuesday so far take some time right now to focus on your breathing take some time to ground yourself wherever you are it's always good to ground ground yourself ground your situation focus on your heart give yourself some time to hey callie becky stacy hey ashley hey shana tink WD-40, right? Yeah. <laughs> so it's going to be fun. We're going to have fun. Uh, but let's see. Let us talk a little bit as I shuffle. So hopefully everyone's having a blessed uh, Tuesday so far. It's been interesting, but luckily I'm taking care of things I've need to, needed to take care of. It's all good. Um, some frustrations have been released, so that's a good thing. Um, another thing. I've seen a lot lately, and again, this is just my opinions, or, well, you know, it's my opinion, I guess. Uh, so you can take it or not. Uh, there's a conversation, which I probably should go back and reply to, in all things witchcraft, about uh, someone removing, trying to remove, like, a negative spirit, negative energy from their home, um, and using sage. Every, like, the first thing everyone goes to is sage. Like, sage, 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 sage. And you all know how I feel, hopefully, uh, about sage. I love sage for what it is, but something that I am very adamant on and something that I express a lot is sage is not and should not be your go-to to banish or get rid of spirits, especially if they are heavy, like earthbound, if they are heavy, if they're spirits or entities, um, something that's like negative in, in our eyes. Uh, sage, oh, well. Happy Tara Wednesday in Australia from from your past. Time zones are so weird. But we well, yay, happy Wednesday to Julie and all my Aussie peeps. So thank you for being a part of this. Anyway, sorry, sidetracked. Uh, but I'm shuffling folks in on a message. But Sage, okay, Sage. One of the reasons, you know. It shouldn't be your go-to to eradicate and banish and get rid of, like, entities or spirits. It really, a heavy spirit like that, especially if you feel and think it's, like, something very um, rooted in your physical plane and it's, uh, say, darker. I hate using dark, but you can understand what I mean by dark, unfortunately, uh, the way we use it. So if it's darker, all Sage is going to do is piss off that entity, that spirit. So, yeah, you Sage, woohoo. Everything else was uplifted and, and the vibration was raised, but that spirit is still there, you know? It's kind of like me trying to fly right now. Like, I'm really heavy, so I'm very, like, the wind. Like, a light wind is not going to move me, but a heavy wind will, you know, move me, but I'm still grounded. But, you know, 
a, a light wind might move someone who is like, you know, a lot less heavy than I am. Um, and a heavier wind will move me. So that's kind of how uh, sage works. Sage raises a vibration. Sage uplifts. It raises the vibration of something. So it brings in positive nature. It brings in good energy, good vibes, but at, it raises it. So it heightens that experience. Um, and something that is like really heavy and something like a spirit, an entity that might, you know, not necessarily be very light uh, and, and it's very like attached to something in your physical space, it's going to get pissed off because it might not know what's going on as well as it's so heavy, it's energy and it's, it's imprint is different that Sage isn't going to do shit to it other than annoy it. You know what I mean? And so that's why I'm always expressing, like, don't let Sage be your go-to. Sage is not a, a, something you use to banish and get rid of. It raises the vibration. It, it uplifts things. And that's a different. That's different. When you use it, it's different. The way you use it is different. And so, yeah, that's my ramble. Hey, Sheila. Hey, Andrew. Hey, Carrie. And that's, uh, that's my my rant and my lecture on Sage. Hey, Anita, good to see you. Hey, Joanna. Hey, Claudia. Oh, that was weird. Yes, shuffle. We are gonna shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. <laughs> uh, so, um, and again, that's why proper discernment comes in. Like, understand what you're working with before you try to get rid of it, uh, because you don't wanna piss something off. So understand it what you're working with, use your divination, your favorite divination method to discern what's going on, um, and then get to the core of the issue. And once you understand the core of the issue, you can then formulate a course of action to eradicate that energy from your space. Okay? I used to really... Uh, Hi, Cyan. Cyan? 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 I like your name. I might not be able to pronounce it right yet, but I like it. Uh, hey, Jackie. Hey, Debbie. But yeah, and so say, Sage will be really good like after. Like after you get rid of something, you know, you, you cast it out, so you banish it, so you've already removed it from your space, okay? Sage is a really good thing to use after because what it does, it uplifts that vibration. So any negative imprint that that spirit energy entity brought in, you now can uplift it, raise its vibration. So now it can no longer take root again. So if you try and call it back or if it comes back, it tries to come back, um, the saging, the sage will uplift its en energy, the essence in, in that space, and it won't be able to like really take its claws and, and root in, if that makes sense. So sage will be good for afterwards, but before that, I again, it's my belief, my... Hey, Tracy. Hey, Angelica. <sighs> so yeah, and always, always, always understand what you're working before you do it. Like people get scared. Like sometimes this might not even be a thing and I'm not like, I'm not, sorry, my hair is like really annoying me right now. Uh, and it's still drying, so whatever. But uh, we can get scared or we fear and it brings something up. And so we at times can make it out to be something that not, it isn't really, you know, something more than what it is. And so we create this hype, this energy, we transfer it to all those around us and then it builds. And so this little thing is now this big thing. So that's why it's really good to understand where you're coming from first understand what you're working with, who you're working with, what you're dealing with, and then, then go for the throw. Take action. Okay? So, well, there's many things that you can use. So depending, again, it really just depends on what you're dealing with. You know, different spirits, different uh, entities would require different things to eradicate them. And there's not just this one thing that fits all. So depending on what you're tackling, I would first do a heavy cleansing, you know, as well as um, 
it's there's nothing wrong with doing cleansing so cleanse and physically cleanse like clean your space you might not think it's dirty but get that dust out because negative essence negative energy can attach itself to clutter can attach itself to dust can attach itself to all those things so if the dishes aren't done do the dishes it helps put you in that space as well to command and, and cast out so i like um just the overall like black copal is really good um frankincense and myrrh frankincense myrrh with copal really good uh palo santo palo santo is really nice um i like to use palo santo uh because it, it kind of does for me like it does what everyone thinks sage does but so much more um, you can make a smudge spray, utilize Florida water. There's so much you can do. Um, but again, it really just goes back to discerning what it is that you're dealing with and then handling it properly. So let's shuffle a few more times. And again, uh, we're working with getting in the vortex cards. And what I do, if you're new here, uh, welcome. But it, what I do is I will shuffle the cards. I focus on a general message that is beneficial for all of us. And when I ask you, not right now, but when I do ask you to uh, express the number one, two, or three that pops into your head, you will come or you will write it down. And that number will help you fine tune the message for you. That number will be your dominant card. So will do three cards. It'll be your dominant card and the other two cards will be your supporting cards. If you do not choose a card, that is absolutely fine. All three cards together will have a message for you. So yeah, so that's how we work. A few more shuffles. Okay. I don't really have a go-to, and that's the thing. It's like, it just depends, but I guess I, guess I would have to um, maybe use a little bit of uh, Frank Maricopal, uh, but it just depends on the situation. And I guess that's just, you know, how I was taught, how I've learned, because if I do one thing as a go-to for everything, then I'm either using too much force, too much power, or not enough. And so for me, I don't want to waste my time or energy, and I need to know uh, what I'm dealing with, um, and then take it from there. Because sometimes I don't need anything. Sometimes it's like, oh, I'm, I'm raising this energy. There's collected energy here, and I really don't need to um, do much. It's that awareness. Okay, so, okay, one, two, or three. Interesting. One, two, or three, go ahead and comment. One, two, or three, comment here, or just write it down, whatever you prefer. This is about your experience, so you don't have to comment publicly if you do not want to. Uh, write it down and take notes. The only thing with iron um, is sometimes like not just evil spirits, it's like all spirits. So you have to be aware of that. Um, and fairy. Hey, William. Hey, Tia. Hey, Jenny from the woods. Love it. Uh, rosemary could be good. It just, again, depends. Rosemary is more for me like calling spirits. So it really just depends. I know that's going to be, um, no, not late at all. I was just rambling, Nadia, so you're not late at all. And I'm catching up with a comment, so I apologize if I'm running behind. Hey, Yoli. Claws? I love your claws, Yoli. Uh, hey, Tracy. Hey, Susie. Hey, Clarice. Uh, hey, Bethany. Welcome. Yes, I love Palo Santo. And again, I know that it's frustrating that I'm like, I don't have a go-to or just, it, it, it depends, blah, blah, blah. Just like, well, that was interesting. Uh, it depends. And I know that is frustrating because we want to be given like this one thing, but it's so important for each and every one of us to discern what is right for us. Because another thing to consider is our connection with the spirits of the 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 items that we work with, the herbs and the oils. So our connection with those spirits, we might you know, normally use, let's say, um, frankincense. That might be our go-to for something. But our connection, uh, your connection with frankincense is gonna be different. Your 
uh, you might need something more potent. And so your connection isn't that strong with frankincense, but you will use something else that actually can do what you need it to do. And your, your um, relationship with the spirit of the other thing is, again, more potent. And so you'll use that over the frankincense because of that connection of that energy. Does that make sense? Uh, you burn it. Uh, you burn it. You can get essential oil, Palo Santo essential oil. Um, yes, good, awesome, Susan. It doesn't say this wood. It's like a thick wood, so you kind of have to keep relighting it. But a little bit goes a long way. One, two, three, one. Okay, awesome. My comments are over here, so I'm sorry. You get to see this profile. Three, two, three, three. Awesome. Good. Two. Awesome. Okay, I think I'm. Uh, you can. You're, if you have a metaphysical shop, you should be able to find that. I know Elisa of Elisa Soul Kisses. That's where I get my Palo Santo most times. So you can find Elisa of Elisa Soul Kisses and see if she has some Palo Santo or a lot of herb shops. Um, carry them. Yay. I love Palo Santo. It's, it's awesome. eBay? Awesome. Okay, cool. Hey, Gail. It smells lovely. Well, I don't know if the incense does, but the actual stick. Um, okay, rambling done. So one, two, or three, go ahead and comment um, or write it down. It's your experience, your personal experience, so no worries. Uh, so again, one, two, or three, that will be your dominant card. The other two cards will be supporting cards. Anything that you feel from the words or you see in the card, anything that pops up, if you want to share, share your thoughts, contemplate anything, or you know, just put things out there, go ahead and comment. We'll talk about it, and we'll create something even better. So card one, billions of us are living in perfect diversity. Billions of us are living in perfect diversity. The di the diversity of your planet is of tremendous value and benefit. Because from variety springs all new ideas and expansion. Without the diversity, there would be complacency and endedness. You are billions of people living the perfect diversity, just as you knew you would constantly asking for improvement and thereby setting up for the next generation that improved life experience, if you understood that and no longer clamored for the one right way to live, things would go better for you sooner. Sorry, these lights are like throwing me off. So billions of us are living in perfect diversity. What does that mean to you? What does that bring up? What does that share with you? So the, the diversity of your planet is of tremendous value and benefit because from variety springs all new ideas and expansion. Without the diversity, there would be complacency and endedness. What does that, what does that mean for you? You are billions of people living the perfect diversity, just as you knew you would, constantly asking for improvement and thereby setting up for the next generation that improved life experience. If you understood that and no longer clamored for the one right way to live, things would go better for you sooner. So, billions of us are living in perfect diversity. What does that say to you? Aloha, Luica. Awesome. The world tree, yeah, I like it. Uh, a bunch of variety of broomsticks, that's fun. They're kind of like their hands, the like gloves. <laughs> that's kind of creepy. So the energy of this card is very interesting. So it's basically expressing that instead of trying to mimic other people or look to other people in other situations, outside influences for what is the right way to live, or even telling people how they should be living, believing that other people should be living their life in a different way. It's more about understanding that 
we need to do what's best for us. You know, it's taking energy, taking charge of our life, taking charge of our situations and understanding that when we focus on ourselves, our reality, the people we love, when we focus on that and what brings us joy, we understand that other people are just trying to do the same for themselves and we can honor the, the diverse way that, that is expressed. You know, just like there are many different types of witches, we don't have to tell one another like, oh, you're wrong for being that type of witch or you're wrong for that being that type of witch, which I've done before. Um, and with reason, we all have our reasons. Uh, so we have to focus on what is most important in our reality. And that is, again, being grateful for diversity, being grateful for the opportunity to be here right now and share with so many different people, so many different uh, types of, of energies. And as we focus on the luxury of that, because this is why we're here, you know, to shift and create change and to cast for different things that we desire because each and every one of us desires something, you know, slightly different. And so the more that we're here on this physical plane on earth, uh, the more we understand that it is about the, the d diverse nature of things because through diversity, we understand what we, we desire. It gives us different challenges to work through. It gives us different, like, different things to experience, you know, like just different foods. Could you imagine eating the same thing over, well, some people could. Um, but you know what I mean? And not understanding that there's so much more, like the spices that someone else uses or, you know, th there's so much more. And it's awesome. It's, it's uh, very exciting to us and it opens a whole new pathway. And the more that we understand and allow for diversity to be what it is, the more that we understand that, the more we create a better foundation, a better place for the new generations that follow. And that's what it's about. We learn from what we've had. We do our best to be better, to choose better for ourselves, not based on other people, but for ourselves and our lives and what, the, what we want for our kin, you know? And we keep paving the way for those who will come after. And it's a very important thing because it makes us, it makes us understand one another better too. Uh, if we understand and appreciate diversity because everyone has a family, everyone has you know, the highest and best of their family in, in mind. And if we want to live this best life we can, if we want to be happy, everyone wants to be happy for the most part. You know? So my family, the, the diverseness of it, you know? so your family, we might be different, we might believe different things, but there's a core energy, core essence that we want to be happy. We want to thrive. We want to be loved. We want to share love. We want to, you know, there are things, there's a core essence, core energy that is expressing like, this is what we truly want. And if we can appreciate that about each and every one of us, it will help us to make the, the right decisions, the right choices, the right investments of energy to pave the way for our our kindred, for those who will come after. We are open-minded and able to grow. Perfect chaos, I love that. Uh, appreciate those around you as who they are, as they bring different things out in you and your world. Hey, Raven, uh, all people are in sync. Nothing is set in stone, there is no wrong way. Acceptance, acceptance, I like that. Exactly, we accept, uh, it's perfect diversity. We accept uh, the energy of that and what it offers and the beauty of it. Because I think at, at the core of, of things, we can understand that we all have this heart. We all have this desire for our loved ones to do well and for us to thrive, to be happy, to be joyous and to live the perfect life. You know, I think that we can all understand that that is something that I, I feel that each and every one of us wants. You know what I mean? And so if we can understand that, then it's like, it doesn't necessarily matter um, who you are. I mean, it matters, but you know what I mean? So uh, who you are, who I am, you know, the person over there, we all have this core uh, connectedness by uh, association, by understanding we want very similar things. Hey, Yvonne. Well, just wait till you see your card, Jackie. It all will blend. Diversity, openness, understanding differences and accepting them. Interactions within diverse communities expands our worldview as well as our inspirations. I can't talk today, apparently. Um, 
Yes, exactly. And like for me, understanding people is very important to me, you know? And I remember when I was in, when I was younger and I had different friends, you know, from different back backgrounds, I would ask them about their culture and their beliefs. I would ask them, and yes, I was ignorant because I didn't know, but I didn't choose to remain ignorant because I wanted to know more. And so, you know, different cultures, different foods and different things. And, and I would ask them, you know, different questions, like how they experience the world. You know, what do they see? Um, and when they speak, you know, how does it affect them? And I would always, you know, be open to, to hearing their stories. And, you know, at the core of it, they just, they wanted the same things that I wanted at core level. So it's very fascinating to be able to do that and and not to be rude, but to come off as I want to educate myself and I want to understand life experience through your eyes. I can't understand because I'm not you, um, but I can do my best to put myself in a situation to be more educated. It's the different things that make life would be so boring if we were all the same exactly. It'd be absolute boringness. It'd be terrible. Right. Uh, thank you. Is your, how do you say your name? Is it Casey? I like how you spell the name. And I probably just fucked it up, so I apologize. Casey? Casey? Is it Casey? That makes more sense, huh? Sorry. So, we are moving away from cookie cutter lifestyles. Uh, this card could be travel, expanding our horizon, expanding our experiences uh, that will uh, simulate us and simulate growth. Exactly. You know, we live in such an amazing time right now to create change, create shift. And before we judge, before we place our opinions on something, maybe we, like you said, Susie, maybe we should travel and we should place ourselves in that experience and, and do our best to see from their point of, of view, their point of attraction, their point of, of experience. And I think that's, um, <clears throat> it's important for us to do when we can and where we can, because I feel like everyone, you know, on some level, there are a lot of people who are just like, blah you and blah you, let's fight, let's fight. Like, I'm better, I'm better, you're wrong, you're wrong. And people aren't realizing like, we just want to live, we want to be happy, we want to be joyous, we want to thrive. And I think that we understand that if we actually took some time to see like how this, how they view them, how they view them, like if we took time to connect with that, we would have more understanding and we might be able to have a better conversation. Alternative living. <clears throat> so, perception, growth, and receptiveness are very important. Absolutely. Uh, so, yeah, billions of us are living in perfect diversity. Instead of saying, my way is the right way, your way is the wrong way, it's like, I love my way and I want to continue to love my way. I will. Let me try to understand your way. That's cool. That's awesome. That's an interesting take on things. I'm, and I can, you know, I can appreciate that. Thank you for sharing it with me. But and again, I'm going to stick to what I, what I love right now. This is who I am. This is my way. But I don't condemn you for your way because I understand that you're doing what you can. And in, in, in reality, you're doing what I'm doing, but in your own way. I get it. I got it. So let's see. All hands are different colors, uh, so be individual, but grow together and learn from others. Yes. Uh, awesome. Good. Okay. Let's see. <sighs> so that was card one. Okay, card two. Dominant for those who chose card two, supporting for those who did not. I'll envision the behavior I desire to inspire. I'll envision the behavior I desire to inspire. What does that say to you? If we were a parent or anyone wanting to inspire positive behavior from an, another, 
we would do our personal vibrational work first. We would align with our source energy by envisioning the outcome we seek and by holding those involved as positive objects of our attention. We would not allow any current unwanted behavior to be the reason for our attention to them. I'll envision the behavior I desire to inspire. So what is that saying to you? Very interesting, especially following the first card. Exactly, Leslie. Yeah. Uh, so I'll envision the behavior I desire to inspire. If we were a parent or anyone wanting to inspire positive behavior from another, we would do our personal vibrational work first. We would align with our source energy by envisioning the outcome we seek and by holding those involved as positive objects of our intention. Attention. We would not allow any current unwanted behavior to be the reason for our attraction to them. Uh, hey, Marley. Wanting to be well to do well with all. So card two, I'll envision the behavior I desire to inspire. What does that say to you? What is it expressing? I like it because, it, you know, the first card is, you know, billions of us are living the in perfect diversity. And this is all envision the behavior I desire to inspire. And it kind of reminds me, and as you share your thoughts, I would love to read them and, sh and talk with you about them and understand what you're saying. But I'll share what I was thinking. Um, before I got on here, before I got on here, I was like, okay, you know what? I'm going to do something that I try to do all the time. Don't always do it. But before I got on here, I was like, you know what? I'm going to ground myself. I meditated. I focused the energy. I, you know, raised uh, my energy. I channeled Reiki and I expressed, you know, all those who desire Reiki energy, you know, during this process, if they call it in, if they want it, then it is theirs. Send it to them. And I envisioned, you know, my expression, my mission. I'm here because I'm here of service. I'm here because I love what I do. I'm here uh, to be of service, to communicate with you to see where we can create some really good news, good vibration, good energy, positive uh, understanding of things. And so before I even got on here, I was visualizing how this would go, what I wanted to express. I didn't visualize all these cards, but I visualized the experience. I want to connect. I want to share. I want you to connect with me and you to share with me as well. I want to grow. I want to expand and, and bring something good to the table where there are always a lot of challenging things, but I didn't focus on the challenge. I focused on the, the beauty of our connection and what we create together. And so I think that's kind of what it's... Uh, <clears throat> but it's expressing abracadabra as I speak, so it shall be. Uh, we'll have fun for the rest of the day at work, Jenny. To set a good example. Mm -hmm. Inspire from ourselves what we believe to be right to others. Be a good example. Practice what you preach. Exactly. I like that. Yes. Uh, that is why it's important to be positive and share the light. Uh, leading by example and from a place of positive motivation and love. I like that. Yes, absolutely. Um, oh, thank you, Kate. I love that one, too. Be honest and loving with yourself. Uh, then prove that to others. Being honest with yourself. Being honest and understanding that we're not perfect. And so we love, we're perfect at being who we are and how we respond and interacting the way we do. You know, that's what we're perfect at. And that's okay. That's a great thing. Because who can do us better than us, right? So I love the honesty about that. So before we interact, before we have a conversation, even like at work, you guys, like before you go to work, <sighs> set your intention, meditate, place yourself in a good vibration and whatever it is that you want to experience, place yourself there, feel that. So when you go to work, you are attracting those energies because of that, not because let's say you have negative Nelly that you're working with um, and they're constantly negative. And so when you go to work, it's like, hey, and they're attracted to you because they're igniting that in you. And so then you become their their negative Nelly counterpart, negative Nelly too. Um, and then you create more of that. But if you go to work, before you go to work and you set your intention, set your vibration, raise your energy, create a really clear focus as to what it is you want to experience and who you are, what you want to feel. If you go to, uh, if you do that before you go to work, there you go. You're raised, you're good. It's all good. You go into work and negative knowledge is like, oh, and then runs the other way. 
or negative knowing is like, hey, how's it going? They might not be so negative or as negative. So you have to we have to be very considerate of that because sometimes it's like they just cannot help it. And so maybe they're not as negative and you don't participate in their, their negative uh, conversation and that's okay, that's a great step. Like that proves to you, you just did the work and that created a really good environment. So it's not always about going to the extreme, it's the subtle differences in shift of energy. And so when you honor that, it just gets better. Well, thank you, Lisa. I always try to find uh, the silver line no matter what. Sometimes it's harder to find, but always there. Treat others the way you wish to be treated, uh, with respect and love. Uh, practice what you preach, accept my son who I'm uh, starting to believe is autistic and accept him where he is versus where people think he's supposed to be and can, can, ah, can't talk, and continue to work with him to get him to grow uh, being as normal as possible. Well, okay, as normal as possible. Your son is normal. You know what I mean? And it's like by whose standard? So it's like your son is normal that's normal, your son is normal. And it always weirds me out. I'm gonna have a conversation. So yes, this video is gonna be long. So thank you for being here with me. And um, it always kind of frustrates me and weirds me out when people compare their children. Uh, well, at that age, my child was walking. Well, at that age, my child was fucking running. Well, at that age, my child changed the fucking tire. Like, that's always bothered me. It's like, who the hell are you? Like, first of all, different situations. When you compare a child, when you, you compare a child to another child, you're creating disconnection, you're creating friction, you're creating uh, hurt feelings. And so it's very frustrating because it's like, no, that's not how this works. Mm-mm. Everyone develops in their own time, and everyone is as they are. Everyone's beautiful, you know? And so we can't compare because there are so many different circumstances. We shouldn't compare because it's not fair. It's not fair to the child. It's not fair to the mom. It's not fair to the child that is supposed to be the perfect example. You know what I mean? That they're being compared to because then they feel like they have to live up to something. You know what I mean? And so it's just not fair all around to do that. So... I envision, I'll envision the behavior I desire to inspire. Right, Leslie? Treat others the way you want it to be treated uh, to be, I don't, I think it's the lights that are like blinding me, it's making me, uh, I'm having like, I can't read. Uh, treat to be gentle to yourself, stay positive. Sometimes being honest with yourself is the hardest type of honesty. Um, finding creative ways to express our vision. Children learn through play. It's innocent and it's open. Children are taught to find fun in art, creative writing, exploration, theater. They learn because they feel happy, secure, and stimulated. And our simulated children are also taught through play how to adopt good behaviors, kindness, etc. I love that. Yes. Thank you, Susie, for sharing that. I love that. Um, <laughs> RuPaul saying fabulous. And people grow and develop their own. Exactly. And that's the thing. It's like um, I have some students who, boom, tarot, easy. I got it. I got it. Oh, I'm taking forever. I got it. Take however long you want. Like, if you're training with me, it's going to be there. You know, eventually I will end my training. Yeah, but that content is going to be there for you. And so everyone develops at their own rate. Everyone has a certain amount of time that they can use. So, yeah, it's just, it's all on you, what you desire. The card expresses a spiral energy from the heart chakra. It does, yeah. Extending outward. Absolutely, you know, what we love. Again, connect with your feelings. Feel this through. What is it that you desire to feel? So before you do anything, or before you enter a situation, feel it out, tap into the heart chakra, tap into what you feel, place yourself in those emotions. And even if you don't feel anything right now, create those feelings. Go back to a time where you felt what you want to feel now. And so channel those emotions, channel that, that energy, not just the words and the thoughts, uh, but the actual emotions behind them that help interconnect them. And then, boom, cast it out, release, share. Again, I'll envision the behavior I desire to inspire. Hey, 
eggplant room. Right. I'm so, um, I went to high school for freshman year and I wish I didn't, but I'm glad I did, I guess. Um, and after that it was home, uh, home independent studies and boom, I thrived. Like I'm so grateful that I was finally believed and listened to and I was able to do independent studies, did my own pace. I graduated early, good grades, better grades. Um, and I started my own life. I did my own thing and I thrived. Okay, so this is card two. <sighs> I'll envision the behavior I desire to inspire. So give yourself that time. Again, before you connect with anyone, how do you want to feel? How do you want to be received? Connect with that emotion. Give yourself that time to think about it, to contemplate it, to be in that emotion. Raise that energy and then send it out. So when you attract and you interact with people, they are attracted to you and you interact from that space, okay? And then, yes, they might bring you down a little if you, you know, we allow that, but you can still get back to that, that space for yourself. So... This card came up in our Patreon group uh, the other day, which I, it's a good card. Card three, dominant for those who chose card three, supporting for those who did not. I can replace false premises and, I can replace false premises with law-based premises. Expect what you reflect. Thank you, Matt. I like that. I like that actually, it's interesting. So I can replace false premises with law-based premises. There has been a theme unfolding here of replacing flawed premises with law-based premises. And we would like to leave you with a final one. We all make too much of all of this. It is simpler than we all make it out to be. Be easy about it. Be kind to yourself. Do things that feel fun. Look for things that bring you relief and just easily move into that place, your vortex, where all things that you want have already been lined up for you. I can replace false premises with law-based premises. Did this card come up in our Patreon group? I feel like it's familiar, but I also feel the words are different. That's weird. Uh, so there has been a theme unfolding here of replacing flawed premises with law-based premises, and we would like to leave you with a final one. We all make too much of all of this. It is simpler than we all make it out to be. Be easy about it. Be kind to yourself. Do things that feel fun. Look for things that bring you relief and just easily move into that place, your vortex, where all things that you want have already been lined up for you. What does that say to you? What does that feel like? What comes up? What do you uh, think of the card? Grounding yourself, universal consciousness. Or vice, yep, exactly. Stay grounded and be one with the universe. Okay. Law-based premises. The whole, the false premises is the, the, what I remember the Patreon group. Universal consciousness. I like that. And uh, your cosmic connection, you know, the crown chakra, raising vibration, understanding that in order, it's understanding and seeing ourselves from our divine space, you know, looking at ourselves from divine um, experience. So, I can replace false premises with law-based premises. And so this is a good energy. This is something that we can connect with. Thank you. I'm gonna have to go back and check them. Like having information, but you, but use actual facts. Don't overreact. We can change the view. Okay. Let's see if I can do this and, and not ramble. 
This card definitely expresses universal consciousness. It's also expressing that we believe lies so much in our life experience. We build our realities, our programming, our, our beliefs, our patterns are mostly based on, you know, half truth false energies, lies, things that other people create for themselves. And as they create for themselves and as they say, make a statement, and then as other people jump onto that statement, and then we're like, oh, well, if all these people believe this, it must be true. So this card is expressing that we have to work at disengaging with that energy and that belief and that process, because in reality, what is true is what we align ourselves with. You know, we can tap into the flow of cosmic consciousness and we can tap into the flow of divine energy and we can create from our crown chakras. We can expand our awareness and uh, attract and manifest and cast and, and use our magic to create so much more. But we are holding ourselves back by allowing ourselves to be normal, to be, uh, to, to work and live and thrive uh, based on what other people are doing and all these things that are do, are being done like media uh the media um and just people who create uh, this desire that you make you think that you want something and then they make you think the way they spin words the way they they, they do certain things or the way so many people believe in this lie but it's a lie okay you decide to apply yourself to it and then you believe it and then you create from that space and so we create a lot from uh, from lies from false based premises and so it's very important that we understand that we can break ourselves from that by understanding that a lot of times we need we me we must connect with our cosmic self utilize our crown chakra to tap into the flow and understand that there is so much more to this than meets the the mundane eye experience Okay, um, also, natural law, divine law, rather like a, the hanged man of the tarot giving over to the process rather than fighting it, take a pause. Uh, this is a turning point, absolutely. And what makes you happy? You know, what is true, what's your true happiness? What makes you happy and joyous? What is fun to you? You know, a lot of people say you can't have too much fun. And we believe that, like, oh, we must we must work so hard to have a little bit of fun. But you can actually make your entire life based on fun. You know, that's a possibility, but we don't believe it, or a lot of people don't believe it. But then you see some people doing it. So it really is getting back to your belief patterns, understanding what is programming you, as well as what brings you joy, what brings you happiness, what you love. The more you focus on what is feeling good to you, the more you realize you can step into this flow, okay, as you're happy, as you're in, in this good space, and you're focusing on all these things that you do love and you enjoy, you start to build energy. Perfect time for casting when you're in this flow. And so as you're focusing on all, all these things that are inspiring to you and they're very fun, they're exciting, and you're doing the things that you love, when you take action from that space, it like catapults that, that essence into wherever, you know, you're, you're sending it, and it brings it to you at a rapid pace because you're in that energy that is absolute um, necessary for you to receive. Uh, for those, I've been wanting to read the A Course in Miracles. I just haven't. Well, universal law, it's like law of attraction, you know, law of attraction, that's kind of like, uh, like attracts like, uh, emotions create, uh, there's just different laws. Uh, it's not binding, it's actually liberating if you think about it. Yeah, it's just saying you're able to create what you desire and what you feel. And again, I'm not going to go because there's so much that I'm thinking about, especially in regards to like quantum jumping and uh, reality uh, transurfing and all this other stuff that I've been researching, parallel realities and how, you know, what you desire for yourself 
yourself and what you love about yourself and what you want to create is already happening. Uh, tapping into that. Uh, that's why this card makes a lot more sense to me. Um, but yeah, it's interesting. Right. So I can replace false premises with law-based premises. So basically, it's just saying that you're reprogramming yourself, reprogramming your mind to step into what is right and true for you and understanding your truth, understanding your, your nature, your soul nature, understanding all of that about you. And then as you step into that, everything that is based on a lie or based on falsehood, you know, false premises that you're experiencing, that you've created, that you've joined in on, you disengage from, and then you take more of your power back, you take more of your energy back, you take more of who you really are back, and then you become even stronger because from that point, point, you can send more energy out because you're not wasting your time allowing these lies, these false energies to take root. Okay. So very interesting reading. Uh, all three cards, card one, billions of us are living in perfect diversity. You know, I'll envision the behavior I desire to inspire, card two. I can replace false premises with law-based premises, card three. Take action. So fal false base information, racial, you know, it could be racial stuff. Like someone, let's say, you know, t someone who targeted me for being who I am they might come to this understanding that the way they believe was based on false information. They don't actually fear. They, they were taught that. And so it's like them learning like, hey, that was a falsehood. And so they step into something um, more in alignment with divinity, divine, cosmic energy, truth. And they act, they, they fill their, their space with you know, law-based energy and not false. So it really is about understanding diversity, understanding that we all have this, this goal in life for ourselves, and that each and every one of us is just doing the best we can with what we have, and we continue to do that to set the foundation and create that growth for those who will come after, for our kin, our children, um, and just keep doing what we do. Love, you know, be fun, adventurous, and then before you interact with people or situations, how do you want to feel that day? How do you want to create this atmosphere for yourself? Envision that before you even step out of the house or even get out of the bed, you know, envision how you feel, feel that feeling, step into it, and then know and trust that everything you come in contact with that day is based on what you've already set into motion. And again, appreciating people's diversity, loving that everyone is different and we all have different things to offer and our interconnection, our understanding, it just builds something even more progressive and amazing and, and new um, and, and inclusive. And then understanding that I can replace false premises with law-based premises is saying that all of our ignorance, you know, the things that we build upon falsehoods, on lies, on things that, you know, other people are creating out of fear, we can get rid of those. We can eradicate those from our experience and, and step into a cosmic consciousness, step into divine being, and, and understand from a better point of view that we can create so much more. And as we focus on those feelings that we desire the, to feel, to experience, and as we step into that cosmic consciousness and universal consciousness, thank you, Susie, as we step into that way of being and we look back at ourselves and we see ourselves, we realize that those uh, false based energies are being slowly uh, banished or eradicated and transferred or transformed into something new and better serving, okay? And we create a better atmosphere for us, life experience for us, and for those who come after us. And I totally lost a lot of viewers when I started talking about this. So, sorry. When we redefine our attachments, we become free. We no longer perceive those attachments as burdens. I like that. Uh, gravity is going to... Right. Okay. So thank you. 
Again, I'm about to go uh, do a video in my Patreon group, so patreon.com slash Witch. If you want to join, uh, feel free to uh, check it out. I'm going to be probably doing the video in like 15 minutes. It's going to be a spell on... It's a dream spell, a spell to retain uh, dreams. Um, so, yeah, it'll be interesting. It also includes a formula, so if you want uh, to participate and see that... Um, Patreon.com slash the Deviant Witch for just $3 a month. And again, you won't be charged till the following, uh, so the first of next month. Uh, but I share spells. I, that's where I do my cards of the day, uh, Monday uh, and then Wednesday on. Uh, and we do this Tuesday. So, yeah, I have a lot to say right now. And there's just, shh, thank you. So I appreciate you. Thank you so much for being here. I enjoyed our conversations. Um, very interesting things to contemplate. Um, it makes me excited to, to be able to do this. So thank you again. I'll be back here next Tuesday uh, for Tarot Tuesday. Again, if you want in on the exclusive videos, feel free to join Patreon. And when you join, I'll send you a message. So look for that message. And that message will include a link to our uh, Patreon-only group on Facebook, where I do all the live videos and much more. So you are all blessings um and thank you so much again i appreciate you it's been fun i'm rambling so i will talk to you all soon and just take some time to contemplate those cards it's a lot of information uh but it's necessary so thank you again blessed be